Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the UCA High School Event Planning Training today. Um, what we will do in the meantime, as uh, we admit folks to from the waiting room, is this quick poll just to see what questions you have for us today. So this is the QR code. I'm also going to be pulling this up on screen, and there's the QR code as well. And I will be also putting that in the chat. So for those of you who are just joining us here, we're just doing a quick poll before we get started with our training. Just about what questions do you have about UCA as well as what questions do you have about um, applying to college? So if you could do that, that would be awesome. So for those of you that are just joining us, we're doing a quick poll um, about questions that you have for us today. So if you could get that going so we can make sure we answer whatever questions you have about UCA as well as applying to college, uh, we can get those answered for you today. Please let me know if that form is working. I'm not seeing any responses come in yet. So we're just doing a quick poll about questions that you have today. Put that link again in the chat for those of you that are just joining. And please let me know if that's working. Awesome, thank you. Okay, well, if we don't have questions, well, I hope we answer what we can today um, about UConn applying for, for college. Oh, I just see some come in just now. Okay, the announcement about the tool. So we will be answering questions about that tool today. Uh, what do colleges do during UCA? For example, US, SUU is coming to my school to help students apply. What else do they do while they're at this high school? Great question. And then what about applying to college? Is Caesar comprehensive guide outlining the steps that students should take? Um, I will, we would be, we'll be able to answer that as well. We do have some handouts that you can use during UCA about how to apply. And do we need promotional code since the change? Very good question. We'll also be um, addressing that as well today. Okay, it's 9.02. Let's get started then with our training. So thank you so much for those of you that participated in the poll. Uh, we'll try to get to your questions as much as we can today. So just some housekeeping items that I just wanna make sure that uh, we take care of so you know. Because this is part of our Ed Insights training, we'll also be able to provide the certificate of participation to as a school counselor, as well as those of you that are college access folks. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, Gear Up, Trio, Pace. There's so many out there, but um, all of you will be provided a digital certificate with the hours earned for this webinar. And if you're joining from a group and you're watching the Zoom together, please send me a list of those individuals with their name, email, and your school. So that way I make sure to get that information to the right people. I just wanna provide just the last two trainings that we have coming up next week um, with our Ed Insights is the student aid 
account creation on Tuesday, September 19th. And then that Friday, we have our all of our colleges and university webinars where they will provide updates about their institutions, about admissions. So if you want more details about specific colleges and universities, that would be the one that you'd want to join for that one. And then registering through the Edentize webpage, and we'll drop um, a link in the chat for you for that. And then this is just more of an overview of that college admissions webinar happening on that Friday. Um, this is also available when you register, so you'll be able to see this. So it's divided in a morning session and an afternoon session, and the colleges are grouped by region. So that way you have an opportunity to hear from both degree granting as well as technical colleges um, throughout the entire session. So just going over today's agenda, I do have with me Chris Coles, who is from our office, um, who will provide some updates around the, um, the admissions tool that we have coming up. And then we'll go over UCA, the structure and the goal, and also just some items on how to pair UCA with financial aid efforts, some tasks and setups that you may consider if you're new to UCA, or, or maybe if you are a veteran, there is maybe something um, that you could still do if, if that's what you're needing for your school. Then we'll go through um, some discussion around sharing best practices. There is a new guiding tool for that. Um, that I've created for you all, for UCA, and then where to find resources. And we'll also hear from Keys to Success today around um, their resources that they can provide during UCA. So Chris, I just want to turn the time over to you. I'm not sure if you had some slides, but I just uh, want to turn the time over to you. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, no, I don't have any slides today, but hopefully next Friday, um, I will have some slides. So if you're joining in that presentation, we uh, hopefully will have a little bit of a, a visual representation of what I'm about to describe to you. So um, let me take you back a little bit. Over the past year and a half, we have been working with um, multiple task forces within the commissioner's office and also the Utah Board of Higher Education, working on a simplified admissions tool, which... Um, has three primary goals. First, it's to ensure that every Utah high school student knows that they're admitted to one or more of our 16 UCHI institutions. Secondly, um, to assist undecided students in learning about higher education and finding the best Utah public post-secondary institution to meet their needs. And thirdly, to enhance the integration of college-going efforts into K-12 practices and processes primarily related to uh, data. Uh, student records and data. And so with those three goals in mind, um, we've been working over the past number of months to develop a tool that would help students understand their uh, options within the state in terms of application and then also admission. Uh, legislatively, um, two years ago, the legislature mandated that our system uh, work on a tool that um, would supply students with uh, some type of direct admission capability to uh, ultimately move to a point where we would hopefully be eliminating the application process for students within the state. So that's our ultimate goal. We are, are not that yet there, but in the multiple phases that we have developed as a part of that ultimate goal, um, we are well underway and, and moving through phase number two right now, which is the tool that I'm about to describe to you. Um, name as well as um, web design and the functioning of the tool will be released here in the next uh, week or so. Uh, for the time being, I can describe it to you as a tool that will help students understand um, which colleges they're guaranteed admission to at point of application. And so the students will go to a landing page, which we will be marketing, and I'll uh, talk to you about that here in just a second. On that website, students will be able to answer a few brief questions um, 
such as like a, a self-reported GPA where they go to high school uh, and then other um, kind of refining questions if they would like to uh, answer those questions. And we will then give back to them uh, institutions within the state, which they are guaranteed admission to. The next step then would just be applying and uh, and then enrolling. In the future, we will get students all the way past that guaranteed admission step and the application step. But in the meantime, we are getting them to this guaranteed admission step right now. Um, as students enter that information and we report back to them what institutions they're guaranteed admission, institutions will also be able to reach out to those students who have expressed interest and also provide um, recruitment tools and things like that, admission tools to those students. So it, it will go both, way, both ways. In addition, students will also receive some automated emails back to them um, with related information about each of the institutions that they've um, kind of expressed interest into. And so then the student from their side can also continue looking into those institutions um, at a later date. So we're coming at this with kind of, I don't know, three prongs, the system level, the institution, and then giving some, the students some tools in their hands so that they can continue pursuing admission uh, at one of those institutions. Uh, this is a statewide effort and um, there are no limiting criteria. This is something that we are trying to do as a, uh, at the system level to open up access and promote um, just this college going environment to uh, to our local students. And this is a growing trend across the uh, the country. You're probably seeing almost on a weekly basis uh, new articles from inside higher ed to the Chronicle to other um, education journals that are uh, talking about this direct admissions concept. And um, it is growing trend around the country. So we feel like Utah uh, needs to keep up with that trend as well. And also to help students uh, realize that they have a lot of options in terms of education here within the state. So as we release that uh, at the beginning of October for the Utah College Application Week, we'll also be providing institutional uh, recruiters and admissions counselors with marketing materials that uh, will provide some more information to students about this landing page and the tool, as well as we'll be providing a bunch of digital marketing assets that we can send out to every institution within the state, um, LEA within the state. And those marketing materials can also be utilized to hand out to students, um, to post on you know, um, notice boards around your institutions, and even if you have digital signage, um, we could run digital ads on, on whatever digital advertising boards that you have inside of your schools. So a host of those marketing materials will be sent out to you. And our hope is really to just push students um, through this tool to help them, like I said, understand what their options are. Um, and then at a future date, as we refine this and provide more enhancements to it, it truly will become um, a direct admissions tool for students later on and, and really eliminating the need for students to apply at individual institutions um, moving forward. So it's an exciting thing for us. We're, we're um, kind of rapidly going through changes and iterations of this existing tool to make it live by October and uh, more information to come. But um, if you have any questions in the meantime, I'm happy to answer some now. Or if you'd like to reach out to me directly, I can put my email in the chat and you're welcome to ask any questions. Maybe one last thing that I'll mention is we're not discouraging students from applying directly at a, a particular institution. This is just um, simply a way for them to see their options. And um, so students are still able to apply and go to an institutional web page and go through that process as they have before. This will just provide them with a little bit more info as they do that. So any questions for me today? Yeah, it sounds like uh, Elise, Alicia, do you have any questions? Hi, this is Deborah Francis and Alicia Bodily at Ogden High School. 
Um, I've been doing UCA for about 10 plus years. I feel like I feel like this is like the rollout of when we did the KTS changeover with UCA. Like it's coming really, really late in the game and us rolling it out in time where we've already started making preparations for college application week, especially those high schools that already have have their things that are rolling out the 1st of October. Is, is this like something that we we are we are doing this year that it's being asked that we do this year? Does that make sense? Like I it's in two so. weeks. Yeah, so I'm not asking you to do anything. The state is taking on the responsibility of managing the website. Um, you don't need to do anything. Um, so simply if students are asking questions about what options do I have for college in the state of Utah, this could be a, a tool to answer those questions. You don't have to do anything else. Students can still apply the way that they have in the past. This isn't the same as the keys to success tool. They don't have to log in with an account. It's nothing like that. Um, this is simply a, an information tool to help students apply. So does that create some confusion though, if we have more than one tool, if we're so tightly connected with K KTS and now we have this other other option or this other tool, does that create some, some confusion among students? Like too many options? Um, well, I don't think so. I, based on the, the, our existing partnership with Ken Garf and the Keys to Success mobile app, the primary use for that app is um, scholarship based, not admission based. I know there's an admissions checklist item on there. Um, and no, we don't feel like this detracts from that. Okay, that uh, that that was my main question because I feel like we were we were kind of encouraged to use that app because that's where promotional codes were, that's where college research. We went through the checklist. We did that program with our students for two years. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah good for those questions. Anything else that we can answer? I know that there is a question in the chat about the website, Chris. I know maybe it's still in the rollout phase. Is that what you meant, Sarah, is like this tool website? Yeah, good question, Sarah. I don't have, yeah. it's not live yet. And so I don't have a link, um, but at a, um, hopefully by the September 20th meeting, it actually probably be after that. Um, but yeah, the, the website is not live yet and won't go live until closer to the beginning of October. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, so all these tools that we're developing um, is really up to your school, at, at least for keys and other things that we have provided. Um, so where you see fit for your school, I think is um, the best way to go. And I, what I also like to say is like the nice thing and beauty of UCA is that it is that, you know, very tailored approach to your school. So if you have further questions about how you're using the tools and the ways to approach it, please let us know. We're happy to help uh, be that mentorship and just sounding board for you. Okay, so if we don't have other questions, I'm gonna get right to um, what we're here for today. So I just wanna give a shout out, first of all, to um, Taylorsville High School for their um, just National Recognition for School of Excellence Award. I think this goes on behalf of all schools that, you know, are doing UCAW and doing amazing work as well as just pioneering, um, just helping students apply, helping them figure out their next steps, et cetera. Um, and then this national award um, is in partnership with um, the American College Application Campaign, which honors high school students that demonstrate commitment to student success and recognizes them for important and incredible done work done with students and helping them apply. Um, so we're hoping that we can still provide this opportunity again. We partner every year with um, ACAC Network um, for this award. And so I encourage you all to stay tuned for more information on how to enter that pool. Um, I know there was it was a hard decision this year, but we want to honor just the 10-year 
um, anniversary with that as well. So, okay, so Utah College Application Week, what does this look like? What What's the goal? Um, so just to give you some background, um, like I mentioned, we partner with our American College Application Campaign Network. That's also part of the ACE, ACT Center for Equity and Learning. Uh, they provide great resources at the national level to help states who are steering UCOT efforts um, at their schools, as well as, as a state um, effort to help students in Utah apply to college and just decide on their next steps post high school. So as you can see here, um, I am part of that network where I convene with other states and just get best practices and bring it back to you all. But also you are a, a big part of these efforts um, as you as the high schools putting on these events and um, helping students throughout, not only during UCA, but throughout the year as well. Um, so I know I'm preaching to the choir here about what the goal is, but um, I also have Dylan Cafferty with me on the call um, who leads FAFSA efforts. And it's one of the things that has been successful for not only UCA, but for FAFSA is to join these efforts together. Because as you know, one of the biggest questions that students have is how to pay for college. So it's so important that we're joining those, those efforts um, by not only doing it during the school day with a college application, right? So setting up a designated time and space for students to uh, directly apply to an application for admissions, but also um, hosting a FAFSA night for students to apply to the FAFSA, as well as other funding opportunities like scholarships, et cetera. So as you can see, UCAW events run October 1st this year to November 22nd. Like previous years, we have continued to extend UCAW into November to provide additional opportunities to help prepare your students, but also have opportunities for you to get volunteers such as the admissions reps who will come to your school. And then FAFSA nights this year will run December of this year into February 25. And please join Dylan's um, student aid agov account creation trainings to get more information about FAFSA related items. Um, just because, you know, if you're hosting that as well as part of your school, or if you have a team there, I encourage you to also join. Okay, pairing financial aid efforts. So one of the strategies that Dylan and I have taken um, at least for this fall, is to leverage UCOT efforts when you're working with students to help them create their studentaid.gov account. So there's some language change here. Um, studentaid.gov account is now the new terminology that we're using for what was formerly used as the FSA ID. So Dylan talks a lot about this in his training, but one of the things that we do want to encourage you to do if you have the time and space for it and capacity is to leverage UCOT and helping students create their accounts as well as parents. Just because we know, um, at least from learning from last year, that was one of the first hurdles, main hurdles that students had. So catching them early and just making sure they're ready for when your FAFSA night comes around um, and when the FAFSA launches December 1st. So these are just some ideas on um, what you can do. There's an array of ideas, right? Of how you can incentivize students, um, but maybe it might be during the school day as part of an activity for UConn. Maybe it's an extra credit opportunity with partnering with some of your faculty members at your school to offer extra credit um, for those students that are able to create an account. Okay, I wanna go into the tasks and setups. Um, I just wanna remind everyone of the UCOM models. This is not an extensive list of the ways that you can go about finding your event, but this is just some of the most top ones that we found over the 10 years that we've been doing UCOM as being successful. Um, 
And you can find this information as well in the UCOM manual, which at the end I will show you where to find all the resources. But for the most part, um, schools have decided to go through a core class model that typically tends to be the most popular. But as you can see, there are other ways to do that. And I'll show you also our best practices document where it'll also lay out some other ideas as well. So how does this all work? How does our Yushi office support you in all of this? So we provide training, so such as this, as well as support for you as a coordinator for UCA at your school. We also send out information through email, and we also share publications and handouts for you to use during your event. Um, you're also welcome to use your own. Uh, we provide handouts and just resources in general to help make your job easier. Um, so if you don't have the time to go in and, and make a handout, we have templates already set up and you can um, make it your own as well. Uh, we also provide statewide media and promotion. So um, part of this effort with Chris as well is to promote um, applying to college um, and the importance of that. So that's another way uh, that we support statewide. And this QR code is directly linked to the UCOM manual, which is where you will see a list um, of high school tasks. So what I have done is broken it down by um, just before your event, during, and then just follow up items that you may consider for what tasks to complete if you're new to UCA. If you are a veteran, I'm sure you have already like a wheel of UCA going at your school, um, but this is just, it might be helpful to you as well uh, to generate ideas or maybe tweak something that you found that maybe um, needs um, to change or that you've decided that you'd like to do something differently this year. Any questions up to that point? I wanna make sure I, I provide that opportunity if you do have questions so far. I don't see anything in the chat. Awesome, okay, well, we'll continue on. Oh, the QR code is not working. Okay, well, in that case, we'll drop the link to the manual in the chat for you. Thank you for that, um, for the QR code not working. Um, okay, so moving on here, we have the UCA and FAFSA night events calendar. So because we have streamlined a lot of the back end work with Dylan around how you're registering for these events, what we've done is created a public calendar that is shared with you as well as other um, partners. So I'm thinking of our admissions individuals who go out and volunteer at your events. So I know we had a question around what do the colleges do um, to help support in all of this. So basically when I send this list to the colleges, they will review it and basically lay out what high schools they support in their region. And most likely they have already reached out to you or you have reached out to them to coordinate when they will come. But basically, um, their job as a recruiter is to help any student on a college application. So basically, if a student has a question about anything on a college application, they can help them. But in addition to that, they also help support students in answering questions about their next steps about going to college. And sometimes some schools may find it helpful to invite specific recruiters because they know that students have questions about specific colleges and so they're intentional about inviting them so then that way they can students who have direct questions about that college can ask that recruiter specifically but the expectation for recruiters is that they can answer really any question and help connect students to the right place or to the right college so hopefully that answers the question about um, what do colleges do Okay, so stickers and pens, I wanna provide some dates around this as well. In the past, we have been able to provide these materials to you as a participating school in UCAW. This year, um, I 
how it was not able to secure the necessary funding to provide that to schools. So I ask you also to be patient with me as we continue to see how we can provide this. But also, I encourage you to recycle your Ask Me About College pins, just because those will be those should be available to you because you have kept them um, annually, so you can use them during UCA as well as other events that um, you have throughout the year. Um, so thank you for your understanding on this. Yeah, thank you uh, for the question around um, the file for these. So I, I do have a link for that and I have it through um, a Google Drive. And this Google Drive also has um, other links that you can go to for the different materials and handouts that we're sharing today. So this is just like a one-stop shot to like see that. Um, yeah, so the question around getting priority on pins when they are available. Um, yes, for those of you that are new UCA schools, uh, that's my hope and goal that we can try to get those to you. So yes, uh, we can try to get that as soon as we can, um, depending on where we're at with things. So thank you for that question. Okay, so application fees, I know we had a question around that and also how does that um, affect the codes that you have received in the past. So as of January of this year, all public colleges and universities removed undergraduate fees for Utah students and that applies to all year round. So this also includes concurrent enrollment application fees. Um, so in other words, what I'm saying is that you will not, we will, you will not need a code, a fee waiver code for students to apply because those have been completely removed from college applications, at least for our public colleges. Our private colleges, they still, depending on if they still have fees, that will still apply. Um, but just to keep in mind, things that are still in place are deadlines for admissions and scholarships, any enrollment fees. So I'm thinking of technical colleges that have that, as well as any enrollment deposits, those that have not gone away, as well as any other fees um, that students may incur, such as course fees, et cetera. Um, so thank you for that question. Hopefully that answers as well. Okay, so sharing best practices. I, this is something new that I'm excited to share with you all around um, this document that I shared. And this is just a big thank you to all of you that have provided feedback on our survey at the end of the year where there was one question that asked, what are any success stories, tips and tricks that you would wanna share with your peers? And um, this is where I compiled all of that um, information into one place for you to go back to and reflect on, but also incur any ideas that you'd like to, to implement at your school. So I'm gonna share where that lives. So if you are on our Yushi website under initiatives, if you hover over in initiatives, go to K-12 Outreach and go to Utah College Application and Financial Aid Resources. If you hover on both of those things, click on that, it'll take you right to our webpage for all those materials. So you can see there's the UCOM manual. You can go back to any recorded trainings, but also under high school UCOM resources, this is where all of those handouts, I know there was questions about handouts on how to apply. Um, there's that as well as I've applied what's next, um, but this best practices guide is what I wanted to showcase to all of you as to, um, it just has ideas by student population, college spirit ideas, how to go about information sessions, how some ideas on how to share information with students and families, and also some communication. Um, what's new in here that we're 
about to roll out, I'm just waiting on a few things from our communications team is the social media templates that you can use. Um, so if you click on any of these, for example, I'm gonna click on um, this idea is my student population. It'll take you right to um, that area. And there's also these arrows down here. It'll take you right back up to the content so you can go look at something else. So I just wanted to share that with you all as a place to um, get generate ideas from one another. Um, but I just wanted to offer the opportunity if any of you wanted to unmute um, and share or have questions around how to promote your UCA, um, anything that you are doing new this year or anything that you'd like to share with the group um, about how your UCA's going or stuff like that. Yes, I see a hand raised. Hey, we were just looking because we also had seen the promotional code thing come up. We just looked on the KTS website and it does show that they're waiting for schools to give them some kind of promotional code. So I'm wondering if some of the colleges will or will not be needing a code. How will we know that? Will that come through you guys? So this has come up already with me working with students. So it appears that um, like students that are Utah residents do have the ability to get it free. However, to have the application free, some of them are requiring to have a code. So for the student that I was helping with Weber, um, when I talked to Weber, they said that there was supposed to be a pop-up that gave the promotional code, but if it disappears, it doesn't come back. So now I know what the prom promo code is for Weber. Um, other, other schools I've already applied to that that's just gone if you've selected your Utah resident. So like USU, there wasn't one. UVU, there wasn't one. So I'm not sure why Weber has it. So they're giving the ability to have it free for students, but they have to put in a code to do it. Okay. Thank you for sharing that information. I was not aware about Weber um, having a code. Um, so I, what I will do is um, look into that further and just make sure that, you know, First, if there's any other school that has a code, and second, um, how long this code will be available for, at least for Weaver, is another question that I will ask. So that will help in, you know, streamlining how you're helping students apply. Any other questions? Just writing this code down. Lisa, would you like me to forward you the email I got from the Weaver rep? Um, yeah, I think that would be helpful if you could loop me in. Yep, and... I'll just forward you what he sent to me about that. Great, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. As far as the key stuff, I know that's still being updated. So if you're using keys to look at information for UCA, at least for that college application checklist, that information is still being updated. Um, so... We do have our keys partners on today that can answer any more questions around around that as well. Okay, so resources. Um, this is the manual. So I want to again go back to our website here as I like go through all of this, but this is our manual where you can find how to apply handouts. I've applied what's next handouts, our studentaid.gov creation. Um, account as well, handout and a college application worksheet handout that you can use and among other templates um, for that. We also have our guide, so our facts at a glance and our college guide, our top publications that we have. Currently our Spanish guide is uh, being updated for translation for just some language changes that we had for the English college guide. So if you're seeing some, a little bit of a difference between those two, for those of you that um, are Spanish speakers, please um, know that that is um, being updated and I'm, I'm that will, should be updated by the end of next week. Um, so yeah, please look at this and, and print this out. What I like to say is, at least for the college guide, is the handouts, any of the sections can serve as handouts. 
So I encourage you to look through and see if there's something that, you know, really interests you to share with students um, or even having it pulled up on your um, desktop if you're like in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with students and going through it that way. So Utah Programs and Majors Guide is another resource to help students look at programs and majors across the state. This does not include our private colleges in our state, but it does include technical colleges and degree granting institutions. Um, and also just keep in mind, sometimes the, the website may have some glitches sometimes. So please be patient with it, refresh, use a different browser. And if you're still encountering issues long-term, please let us know. And, and I'm happy to connect with, with our office that oversees that. So the logos uh, for UCA, this is the QR code where you can find um, that basically goes right back to that Google Drive that I shared. Um, but this is the updated logo for UCA. I encourage you to please ensure that you are using the updated, updated logo. Um, I know we've had some step up logos and things like that, but we have sunsetted that and this is our new one. Um, and so, um, yeah, use this QR code to go to that. You can also find this on our website here under the logo and pin it templates. You can go and see this as well, where it has the um, logos for all the colleges, the different logos for UCA, and then also these templates for pennants. So if you're doing like a wall pennant with students or something related to this, this is already digitized for you. You just have to print. Okay, so I think that's all I have for you. This will be, um, this is being recorded. And also I will send a copy of the slides so that way you can refer back to, but I want to turn the time over to our partners at Kisa Success um, to share more information about um, the portal. Hello everyone. Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Uh, my name is Haley Mischler. I work with uh, Success in Education and Keys to Success specifically. So um, I wanted to hop on and mostly just share some information about our college application checklist feature of Keys to Success, um, which is the most applicable for you all in regards to um, UCAW. So um, is it okay if I share my screen, Lisa? Yes, go ahead. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Let me just pull that up for you. All right. OK, perfect. So um, I just wanted to share this with you all really quick so you can get a glance of what the college application checklist looks like on Keys to Success. Um, but we partnered with the Utah System of Higher Education to provide this resource, which guides students through the exploration um, applying to and also paying for college. So it's a super easy to navigate seven step tool and it's accessible directly from the homepage of the Keys to Success app. Um, and the best part of it is it's incentivized. So when students log into Keys to Success and use the college application checklist tool, they'll earn points for using this tool and for completing the checklist that they can redeem for the amazing prizes that we have in the app. So even if you're using other tools throughout UCAW to encourage students to apply to colleges, um, I still recommend having them log into their Keys to Success, to Success account, checking off these steps so they can get those prizes for, for doing those applications. So this here will show you the seven steps of the checklist. So the first step will show them how to choose their degree or certificate, different options um, that they can pursue. After they've explored those, it'll ask them to explore a career of interest, and it'll lead them to the Career Center of the Keys to Success app, which has tons of resources to help them figure out what they might want to do um, in college or um, post high school. So they can take our assessments and explore our Career Center to, to help them figure that out. 
they'll click that checkbox and then step three will take them to where they can select colleges. So we have a map in the app as well as a list view of the higher education institutions and uh, institutions throughout the state that they can select and see more information about um, tuition, location, programs, et cetera. They can select the colleges that they're interested in, which will take them to the apply to college step four, where they can actually apply to those colleges that they've selected they are interested in. So it'll take them directly to the application page of each institution's website. Um, and then the student will come back to Keys to Success, click the I have applied box after they've applied. And then it'll take them to step five, which shows them information about um, making sure that they send their transcripts to those institutions, information about how to fill out FAFSA, and then lastly, information about how to apply for scholarships for those institutions. So um, throughout this process, it's just um, kind of an easy way for students to at a glance see what they'll need to do to apply to colleges and then get points for doing so. And then um, here's just an example of what some of the prizes that we have um, in the app look like that students can redeem for using Keys to Success. So for the college application checklist, uh, they get a 55 points for completing it. And most prizes in Keys to Success are 25 points. So that's two um, really great prizes that they can redeem just for going through that checklist, exploring it. And um, it's a really great resource for you all in regards to UCAW to include in your students' um, tools and resources. So if anybody has any specific questions about the Keys to Success um, college application checklist or tools that we have uh, in regards to Utah, um, UCAW, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions, but we just want you all to know that Keys to Success is here as a resource to you, and we really want to um, help you all utilize our tools. We all have regional managers for each of the high schools and districts throughout the state of Utah that um, are really invested in their regions and wanting to make sure that each of those high schools are able to actually utilize our resources to the best of our abilities. So if you don't know who your Keys to Success regional manager is, you can reach out to me um, and I'll put my email in the chat and we can make sure to get you connected with somebody on our team so that we can chat with you more about this if you'd like to as well. But any questions about our resources or what we can do to help you all with UCAW? Just questions about um sharing the, the slides, but I think Sydney already sent those to me, so I will include that in the bundle of materials that we'll follow up with. Perfect, yeah, and I see Mandy asked that question, so Mandy, I can also reach out to you as well and get you those. Okay. Any other questions about Keys to Success or the College Op Checklist? Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for giving us the time to chat. As I said, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to set up a separate Zoom call to meet with any of you to chat about Keys to Success or uh, take that time to show you how to utilize this checklist more in depth. So thanks so much. Thank you, Haley. Appreciate that spotlight for Keys. Um, just another tool, right? We have lots of tools out there that um, can help students. Like I said, um, if you need us to be your sounding board for how to go about your UCA, please reach out. I know I had talked to some schools via Zoom to help talk through some of uh, the things that they're considering, just like how to gather it all together. So I encourage you to reach out to myself um, to, to talk through. Um, but other than that, I just want to turn the time over to you all if there's any other questions. I know last year we did more like a round table, um, open discussion about any other questions that you have. Um, some of the things that we've talked about, like is deferment, um, how does FAFSA, any FAFSA questions that you have, um, things like that. So I just want to give this last 10, um, few minutes left that we have together. Uh, to talk more about that. So if you have any, this is the time to ask. And go ahead and unmute or in the chat. I guess I have a quick question just because I know that this was covered in our UCAC training, but we were given a lot of information. Is there um, 
somewhere we can go to verify when kids have different parental situations like divorce or whatever, which parents need to have those FSA IDs? Yeah, great question. I'm actually going to be releasing a handout um, here soon, just waiting on our communications team with more details on that. Um, and you'll be able to better understand how to kind of go about that. But feel free to also reach out to me if you have more detailed questions on a specific situation. Happy to help. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, so the best way to get updates is through our website. We're um, always trying to make sure we have the most updated information. It may not be as quick as you anticipated sometimes, but it will be there. So please check that often for updates. Well, in that sense, let me also ensure that I do one last walkthrough of where to find resources now that we're kind of like on that uh, flavor. So let me share screen again. Okay, so if you are on our Yushi website and you go to initiatives, K-12 outreach, make sure you're hovering over that and then also hover over Utah College Application and Financial Aid Resources. You'll click on that and this will bring up our website for UCAW and FAFSA. So if you have like a change in your event, I'm particularly thinking of FAFSA, you would click here on the registration. The UCAW manual is where you'll find a lot of these handouts. And same thing with our best practices document, you can click on this and go right to a section. So the section that I like to highlight is Appendix A, where you see all these student resources. And the, the link to our web page is right there as well, where it'll show you a handout for how to apply to college. So you can use this for students. Um, if they have questions about I've applied and what my next step is, there's a handout for that. It has scholarship and financial aid information on there. This one is a little bit different for what Dylan has, but this is just like an initial like information about studentaid.gov and then it links right to Dylan's handout um, around this. So that might need to be updated because this seems outdated, doesn't it, Dylan? Yeah. That's last year's. So just exploring some of those on here. And then, like I mentioned, the UCA resources um, here as well that you can click on. And then we also have our Paying for College Toolkit. If you're wanting to incorporate more of that financial aid efforts during UCA, there are items here and templates for presentations. Um, and then other resources as well. So you can see here, we have direct links to how to apply. Um, so for all the students and taking campus tours, so you can use this as well for your own efforts with um, your students. Okay, do I see any other more questions, Dylan? Is, am I missing anything? Not in the chat. Great. I I wanted to also turn the time over to you if you had any things that you wanted to share before we end today. Okay. Well, I will give you back some time um, here with this training. Thank you so much for joining. And we'll be following up with the materials, the recording, and the slides. Um, and if you have questions, you know where to find us. Thank you so much.